I want to ask Greg Palace this question because he's written about it in his new bestseller, Vulture's Picnic, BBC reporter, American. Greg, we talked about this a month or so ago when you were on. The elite are making 40 to 1 bets like Corzine with MF Global with their own people's money. They're launching all these wars. They're trying to go into Africa now to get the resources, saying it's for Joseph Kony. Uh, they're trying to attack Iran. I mean, it's just, is there any level that this arrogance, this hubris is going to run out of steam? Uh, what do you make of all this craziness? Well, it's, there's a lot of money out there, man. I see them moving into Africa where, uh, for example, I looked at... Uh, uh, the, the big backers behind Romney, the billionaires, they just seized a, um, a shipment of cobalt worth 80 million. You got cobalt, you got uranium with the resurgence of nuclear power. Uh, remember, that means a resurgence of uranium. Um, and that's not only uh, the Republican side, but uh, Bill Clinton's uh, big backers are big in uranium. Lithium, uh, don't forget lithium. You got lithium. And, of course, in Afghanistan, you have rare earths. Uh, you, you've got, you know, there's a lot of resource out there. So the machinery continues so long as there is funding. You know, I was looking, I just was discussing with my good friend Roseanne Barr about this Coney, you know, 2012 video. And, you know, it, it's very, you know, it, it, it's sadly funny. I just came back from the Congo and from Liberia and Africa where I um, did filming on these warlords. What's missing from the Coney film about the Coney 2012, it's all about some crazy warlord out in the middle of the, of the rainforest in Uganda. But there are warlords with murderous child armies that have run all over Africa. They don't uh, pull AK-47s and mortars from the trees in the forest. They are given those weapons. There is a tremendous, tremendous industry in getting out diamonds, gold, you name it, and getting guns and mayhem back in and people making money off the mayhem. If you, you know, so it's not about those Africans. Who's making the money from this? There's some, the, uh, the mayhem in Africa, the child soldiers, the killings, and I did this report for B BC when I took a, the, uh, not just Coney, but uh, the child armies of Liberia and Charles Taylor, uh, who has been sent to The Hague. Who's behind these guys? Who's making the money? Well, I'd look to New York and Vail, Colorado, and and <laughs> the billionaires in the U.S. and Geneva and London and France. Exactly. These are like globalist, very well. These are like globalist prison wardens. Now, the reason we got you on here with this abbreviated interview today, Greg, is Fukushima. One year anniversary of all that. Uh, in the week coming up a year ago, reactors blowing up. Some of them are still melting down a year later. And we're told radiation is now good for us. Yeah, the radiation salesman. Uh, you know, in and, and uh, I think that uh, the, the soldier that you just spoke to will appreciate this, that the U.S. Congress in 2010, at the request of the Obama administration, virtually unanimously voted to increase to uh, for an emergency war appropriation which would provide armor for our soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq and in a tiny tiny uh, paragraph hidden deep in that bill uh, was an eight billion dollar loan guarantee for nuclear power plants now what that has to do with armor for our soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan you tell me but that eight billion dollars uh, now is funding um, the building of four new twin sets of nuclear reactors in the U.S. And I'm very concerned because the first reactor is built, by the way, will be down towards your way. They're supposed to be built at South Texas. And they say, don't worry, these will be safe because the, and I, and I can't make this up, the management of the construction and operation of the plant will be by Tokyo Electric Power. Like that? That's what's happening here, and um, and and you know they gave us such jive about Fukushima, such jive, and it uh, you know they said that it was brought down by a uh, by an earthquake and a tsunami, uh, that they didn't expect a 9-0 tsunami. That's true. The 9-0 tsunami was Alex was in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, about 110 miles from Fukushima. By the time it hit Fukushima, it was a lot less. Um, what happened? The answer is. That the uh, that they cheaped out that the builders had faked the earthquake proofing at the plant, so that the earthquake at the plant wasn't that bad, but it was still 
because they lied. Let me ask you this question. I, I saw a number put out by the federal government even a few months ago saying nine out of ten reactors, 440 something worldwide, are leaking. And I hear about in Southern California one leaks, and they're like, next time we're not going to turn the alarms on. And then one goes off in Illinois, another in Nebraska, Colorado. Uh, Canada. They're going off all the time. They're like 30, 40 years old. They're rotting. They're supposed to go 20 years. What are the elite thinking? They're just going to let them all rot because they're still getting dividends and their grandkids will all die, but they'll have money? I mean, what's going on here? Well, that is how it works, isn't it? Look at the look at the Gulf spill, cheaping out, uh, BP cheaping out on the uh, on the safety there. And, you know, you heard my story for Vulture's Picnic about how they, you know, didn't use... Um, that they use cheap uh, cement to plug those things. You know? Well, stay there, Greg. We're going to come back. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying Halliburton's a great company. I'm not. I've attacked them, but they were just doing the actual contract to drill it. BP tells them, inject seawater and concrete. And they go, that'll, that'll blow up. It's never worked. It'll blow out. They said, just do it. And so it blew out. I mean, it's just delusional. We'll be right back. All right, look, I, I got to get Greg Palace on for a full hour soon. I'm almost out of time. I promise to go to some of your calls, Nicolette and Alexander and Brian and others. But, Greg, look, bottom line here, as I was saying, I'm not against technology. There's some cleaner forms of nuclear power. The problem is if the companies are run by crazy loan sharking banker mafia people and they start telling us radiation's good, as you know, the EPA last year just raised the levels and said it was safe because of Fukushima then I'm totally against it. It's like I'm for the death penalty, but I, you can't trust a corrupt government to implement it. I, exactly. I was a racketeering investigator and ran the big case against the plant builders in the U.S., including Shaw Construction, which is going to build all four new nuclear plants in the U.S. and will rebuild Fukushima. The problem is not nuclear power per se. You could build a, a safe nuclear plant. What you can't do is have private companies, private sharks who can make a buck off skimming and put the money in their pocket. If they build a nuclear plant, good night. There's nothing wrong. It's not nuclear power per se. It's the guys who are running it. You were talking about Shaw Construction. I got them convicted of racketeering, and here they are back. Uh, you wouldn't let a, uh, a guy convicted of, of, uh, of you know driving a school bus drunk and giving him another license to drive a school bus these are guys convicted of lying about earthquake proofing of all things. They lied about emergency diesel generators. I put it in front of a federal grand jury. That's it. Just ban nuclear, ban nuclear power except for submarines and military because they haven't had that bad of a record. Ban them. I mean, that's it. I mean, if you guys want to build this like you build some mafia high school, I'm done. Ban it. I mean, what do you say we do? You can't trust these guys. That's the problem. You cannot trust these guys. The guarantees were given to Citibank and J.P. Morgan. If things go bad, they get a guarantee and you get thyroid cancer. I'm sorry, that's not a good deal. I want If these guys don't have their own behinds on the hook here monetarily, if things go bad, they literally lose not a dime if things go bad. Well, Greg, let me ask you this question, uh, two questions. A, can you come on Monday or Tuesday for like 30 or 40 minutes because we're out of time here? And I'll, I'll, sure, for you, yeah. You want to come on uh, 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 tomorrow or Tuesday? Tuesday be better. Well, let's get you on in the last hour Tuesday. Uh, that'll be 1 o'clock Central. How's that sound? We'll make sure we get it there. Okay, okay, okay boom, because I want to do a full hour on this because you, I forgot you've actually sent them to prison for this stuff, so you're a true expert on it. But expanding, other question, what are these crazy people thinking uh, doing this. Where does it end? I mean, if, if, if these reactors were supposed to be shut down 20 years ago, most of them, as you know, 40 years old, are we going to start just seeing disasters everywhere? Because it's already started. Yeah, and they may not tell you about it. It's cracking and corrosion. You have to understand it's 3,000 uh, degrees, tremendous pr uh, pressure in these pipes. They crack and corrode. Some of them are down to a hundredth of an inch of, of thickness. You've got a tremendous corrosion problem of thousands of miles of piping that they can't even get to. So I'm very concerned about this new business of doubling the life. Well, they can't double my life if things go wrong, can they? Uh, and, and this is a big big problem. They said that, there, that these are the same people who said no one was hurt at Chernobyl after the, uh, other than at the explosion itself. And I just spoke to uh, a doctor in, uh, in the Ukraine who herself has thyroid cancers. There's a tremendous epidemic of thyroid cancers there. It's, it's ridiculous to say that, this, that radiation won't hurt you.
come on, guys. That's you know. And the well, that's what the TSA and the radi the radiation scanners they say they're good for you. And now we learn they've let the tribs for twenty years use DU and it's killing them. I mean, the elite claim they're in control. They're only good at bossing us around. These people are so confident and so full of chutzpah or bravada, they're destroying our entire planet, including their planet. They're crazy. Well, remember, uh, Bin Laden didn't uh, fly plane. It wouldn't didn't fly plane to building. These rich guys don't do this stuff themselves. They don't put themselves in harm's way. The vultures have their their ski places in Vail. There ain't no nuclear plants over there. There ain't any nuclear plants near New York City now. They were, they killed that off. They were supposed to have them in New York. So you know, let, let's face it. These guys don't put themselves in harm's way. You're the guinea pigs. You're the troops. And gee, isn't it a shame what happened to Fukushima again? These were the guys that told us that Tokyo Electric were the pros, and they so they invited them to Texas to build your plants in Texas. Now they're telling us, oh, well, that's the Japanese. They don't know what they're doing. They have those little tiny hands. They can't deal with electronics. Come on, guys. You just told us that these were the pros and that you're going to bring them to Texas. All right. Same Gre Greg Powell's phony jive. Greg Pallast, again, his Skype's breaking up. He hasn't had a fifth of Jack Daniels. Greg Pallast, you are awesome. We're going to talk to you on Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. I got rid of Greg early just to keep my promise. Thank you, sir, to go to your phone calls. GregPallast.com is his website. Our site's Infowars.com. And my uh, Twitter account is Twitter.com forward slash Real Alex Jones. But I promise to go to your phone calls, so let's make it happen. One minute apiece to get to most of you. Nicolette in Connecticut, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. I'm a senior in high school in Connecticut, and I woke up about six months ago when I saw Loose Change, and I listen to you whenever I can. I am committed to waking others up, and although kids are always making fun of me about it, teasing me about it, for example, when I brought up chemtrails in my AP environmental class, they mocked me saying, yeah, like, oh, yeah, I'm sure there are chemtrails, and 9-11 was an inside job, and I was like, well, 9-11 was The government was admits their, their geoengineering, yeah. Exactly. Um, so I woke up my sister with loose change. She couldn't sleep for weeks. I woke up my friends, Amanda and Izzy, and they get it. So just last week, I showed my dad a video clip of you predicting 9-11 in July, two months before it happened, and that freaked him out just for a couple of days, but then he came back to me and he said, you know, I've made a decision to trust my government. Um, I'm a former prosecutor, and now I I'm just concerned about your mental health. And he just says that I'm a conspiracy nut, so he's listening right now to the show because he knows I'm on. And what would you say to him to wake him up? Or moreover, like, what should I say to him to wake him up? What well, the, the Soviet Union arrested people that thought Stalin was bad. Hitler had people arrested for mental illness who thought that Hitler was bad. Uh, government is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. It's like fire. George Washington said that. So... Uh, I think that, you know, your friend needs to wake up and uh, realize that impeachment's been introduced against Obama. This is a big, big news. Back when it happened to Clinton, it was top news for selling us out to the U.N. and saying our military is under U.N. control. You know, I, I mean, I'd ask your friend, why isn't this bill in the 112th Congress, HCON Res 107, at, at the Library of Congress? He can go look it up right now. Why is it this news? You know, that's the type of question I'm asking. Nicolette, good to hear from you. Great to know we have so many young listeners. You are the future. God bless you. Uh, let's go to Brian in North Carolina. You're on the air, Brian. Quick, urgent report for you. Go ahead. Uh, all right, thanks. I'm going to my Mayadan Town Council and State Senator in North Carolina tomorrow, 7 o'clock p.m., to resist Agenda 21, provide the facts at the James A. Collins municipal building. I have sent a news tip to your show tips email about this, Alex, seven days ago under the subject on Mayadan Town Council. Well, you're awesome, and God bless you. We do sell the excellent book uh, Behind the Green Mass, Agenda 21, at InfoWars.com. It exposes the entire globalist program of control. You're saying you sent us a news tip? Good. Fight international zoning that's set to take over and destroy property rights in your area today. Austin, where I live, is totally under this criminal system. Resist it. From Alexander in Colorado, 30 seconds is all we've got. I'm sorry. Yes, I am a uh, veteran and a student at Colorado State University. We have shown the uh, blueprint of Mad Men in class with over 200 people. Awesome. It was so amazing to see how these people are waking up and all the youth are actually starting to understand what's going on. 
and Alex Jones, uh, you are just an amazing person, and I really... You're amazing. Time. We're all together. Free humanity against a small group of criminals. By the way, New World Order Blueprint of Mad Men is free online, folks. Get it. Get it out to everybody. God bless you. I'm sorry the other callers. Back tomorrow, 11 a.m. We'll see you then. Infowars.com.